Well, good morning officially, everyone. We are glad that you are here to worship with us on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost online worship for St. Matthew Lutheran Church in Avon. I'd like to say a special thank you to those who are serving with us today, Kathy Allsgaard, Sarah Lindquist, and Meg Kraft. If you are interested in participating, reading a lesson, or helping with our prayers, we invite you to reach out to us. We'd love to incorporate you. If you are new to our online worship experience or new to St. Matthew in general, we invite you to check out our website, which you will see there printed on the screen, stmatthewavon.org. And you can click on the send me an email for your online opportunities, and then we can be in touch with you. Or you can simply send us a message through the website and we will be in touch with you. We welcome you to our community. I invite you at any time to leave your prayers in the chat. If you click on that button at the bottom that looks like a speech bubble, you can leave your prayers there and we will pray them during the time of intercession a little bit later in the service. Last week, we had our first discussion group on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on the topic of white privilege. We will include what we discussed in the email that goes out tomorrow about that class. And we would like for you to join us even if you weren't with us last week. So please check out the Monday opportunities email okay, um, and you will be able to find the ways to access that class or just simply reach out to us. I'm just gonna check and make sure everyone can hear me. If you can, give me a thumbs up. Okay, that's good. I'd like you to know that council is meeting this week. It was rescheduled from the week of the power outage. And this is the time when we will consider the recommendations from the reopening task force. So the congregation can expect some kind of message about our reopening process in the coming week or two. So be patient, it is coming and all within good time. We are eager to be able to communicate whatever decisions are made Monday evening at the council. With all those things done before us, I invite you to prepare yourself for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing our opening hymn. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. In 
peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, for the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. defend us, O God. Let us pray. God of all the peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. We now hear a children's message. Hi everyone. I have a question for you. Do you think Jesus came to help everyone or just a certain group of people? Well, it may sound like a silly question. Of course Jesus came to help everyone and loves everyone and wants to redeem everyone. But when he was starting out in his ministry, some of his disciples thought he should only help the people of Israel, his own country's people. It'd be like me saying that God only cares about Americans or something along those lines. And perhaps even Jesus may have felt that way about the nation of Israel at first. But then there's an encounter with a Canaanite woman that we'll hear about today. They were the longtime enemy of the people of Israel. And Jesus doesn't help her at first, but then after seeing how much she trusted and believed in Jesus' love and power to heal her daughter, Jesus said how great her faith was, and her daughter was healed immediately. He may have wanted to help the woman grow in her faith, or he may have wanted to teach his disciples more about his mission, or perhaps a little bit of both. This story shows us that Jesus didn't come to just help his own country's people. We learn that Jesus helps, saves, and redeems all people, no matter what their race, nationality, color, or creed. Jesus loves us and people who are like us, and Jesus loves us and people who are different from us. And just like he taught his disciples to care about people from other countries and races and religions, he inspires us to be in relationship with people who are different from us too. God loves all people and thanks be to God for that. We now continue with our reading from scripture. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. 
For soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister them, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Close your eyes for a moment. I want to invite you to think of a time in your life when your faith was challenged the most. Maybe you lost someone or thought you were about to. Maybe it was when a loved one was arrested for a crime or when you felt trapped in the clutch of addiction. Maybe you received a bad diagnosis or encountered another challenging event like your house burning down or your marriage falling apart. 
times of trial and tragedy can make us feel like God is completely absent from our lives. But they can also have a way of making us feel closer and more trusting of God's presence in our lives. You can open your eyes now. In today's gospel reading, Jesus meets a woman who is experiencing the scariest thing a mother can face. She fears she is about to lose her child. She is afraid. She is in anguish. She is desperate for anything or anybody that will help her daughter. There's a couple ways we can interpret Jesus' response here. One is that through this experience, Jesus himself learns that his mission is beyond just the people of Israel, as I talked about in the children's message. That is a valid way of understanding this text. And certainly Matthew felt that it was important to include for his audience to understand that exact point. But today I'm more drawn to explore how this text relates to our own faith journeys and the trials and challenges we face to our faith. This woman clearly believed Jesus had the power to heal her daughter. She sought him out and begged for his mercy. She was certain Jesus was caring and compassionate enough to heal her daughter. She was certain, but Jesus challenges that certainty with his words, probably on purpose. He challenges her to believe in his love and mercy despite all appearances to the contrary. Even after some apparent rebuffs from Jesus, she refuses to doubt Jesus' love and compassion. Jesus tells her, I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When we hear that, we might ask ourselves, how often do I feel like God is willing to help others, but not me? Other people who are more deserving, other people who are more religious, other people who truly believe in a God who answers prayer. When life throws our own unworthiness in our face, how do we respond? Do we doubt God's willingness to help us? Or do we believe in God's mercy in spite of our supposed unworthiness? The woman simply responds, Lord, help me. And Jesus says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Here, Jesus sounds like he's insulting her. He sounds prejudiced against Canaanites, Israel's longtime enemy. How often do we feel like we are not God's children, like God doesn't care about us? How often do life's messages tell us that we're not important, not lovable, not deserving? Imagine hearing these words from Jesus Christ himself. Would that make you doubt God's love for you? Probably would for me. Yet this woman says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus was incredibly impressed and says, great is your faith. And her daughter was healed instantly. That is the kind of faith that can move mountains. That refusal to give up hope, to give in to anger or doubt, that humility and trust and belief in Jesus' love that she has is absolutely unstoppable. She has unconditional faith. We hear a lot about unconditional love. This is unconditional faith. 
Faith that doesn't depend on any conditions being met. Faith that doesn't need any signs or reasons to trust. Faith that did not need words of comfort. Faith that refused to doubt God's love for her in spite of everything she experienced. And after this great trial of faith, her prayer was answered and her daughter was healed. This is more than just a healing story. It is a model for our lives. Life has a way of constantly challenging our faith, tempting us to doubt God's love for us. But through these trials, Jesus enables this woman to manifest the great faith she has. He challenges her, pushes her, and her faith grows and grows. She matures to the point that nothing, not even Jesus' apparent rejection, can convince her that Jesus does not love and care for her. That is the kind of faith God wants all of us to possess. That is the kind of faith we are called to manifest. That is the kind of faith that we are here to bear in our daily lives. Perhaps the purpose of all life's trials and tribulations is to force us out of complacent faith and inspire us to unconditional faith, to believe in God's love despite all evidence to the contrary. That is the kind of faith that can change the world. So next time you are facing a trial of faith, remember this woman's story. Remember how Jesus refined her faith, which was already great, and helped her to manifest unconditional faith in him. Faith that wasn't dependent on any outward conditions being met. Faith that wasn't dependent on things going her way. Faith that didn't rely on anything external. Faith that wasn't even phased by Jesus' apparent rejection or reminder of her supposed unworthiness. I pray we all might manifest unconditional faith in our lives. It can be hard to have faith sometimes, but understand that it is a journey. Trials of faith are periods of pruning and growth. Trust that in those times of trial, God is at work refining you, refining your heart, and helping you grow. Trust because the good news is that God uses even the feeling of God's absence to help us grow closer to him and deepen our trust in his love for us. Thanks be to God for this gift of faith and for the promise that one day we will no longer need faith because we will see God face to face. Until then, we trust, we believe, we have faith. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The prayers of intercession. Each petition will end with the words, Lord, in your mercy, to which the congregation may respond, hear our prayer. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures and earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. Especially this day, we pray for Canon Hinton's family and all who have lost loved ones in gun violence. For all those planning to return to school, including returning college students and their families, Dick and Judy Kraft, for nursing home residents and workers and their families, for the people of Lebanon, Sue Young and her family, and Dorothy Jensen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation, St. Matthew Lutheran Church, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. are sending him.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.